Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at Ecological Monitoring for your AQA A-Level in Environmental Science. A-Level Environmental Science, Topic 1, The Living Environment. Lesson 11, Ecological Monitoring. During the last few lessons, we have looked at different biomes, the threats they are facing, and methods being put in place to try and conserve them. As part of the conservation planning process, decisions need to be made to ensure the right conservation efforts are established. As a result, the conservationists need to collect data on the species present and features of their populations to ensure the best strategies are used. The features of each population that need to be studied are referred to as population dynamics. This includes the size of the population. It has to be large enough to ensure the population can sustain its numbers without depletion over time. The distribution throughout the habitat. Occupying a larger area will make the species less vulnerable to threats. Species that can only survive in a small area are more likely to lose that area and then not be able to survive anywhere else. Survival rate. This is the number of individuals that are dying per set amount of time. This could be natural deaths, predator attacks or illnesses. Having a low survival rate will obviously make the population more vulnerable to depletion. The age structure of the population. This essentially means looking at the ages of the individuals in the population. If a species has a population mostly made of older individuals that no longer breed, then they will be more vulnerable to extinction than a population full of breeding adults. Collecting data on all of these factors will give us a general overview of the population and how vulnerable it is to extinction. We can collect this data using a range of specialised monitoring techniques. Let's take a look at these monitoring techniques. The first monitoring technique we're going to look at is using imagery. This refers to any technology that captures images of individuals in a population and the surrounding area. Image databases can be collated as a way of recognising certain individuals in a population and tracking their movement and lifestyle. Identifying individual organisms can be very useful in conservation as it allows us to gather information on their territory size, movement, lifespans and social interactions. Tracking a few individuals in this way can provide us with a lot of data. However, a limitation of this technique is that few species have unique features that can be used to separate individuals, so often tracking collars or tags are needed in conjunction. Furthermore, it requires a lot of time to monitor an individual and may involve movement of cameras as well as trawling through thousands of images, so it can be quite expensive. Another type of imagery used are motion-sensitive cameras. These can be positioned throughout a habitat and will only begin recording or capturing photos when motion triggers them. You can get cameras that work in the day and at night time, and some amazing images have been captured using this technique. A limitation to consider is that they could be set off by motion of an unwanted organism, or in some cases, the weather. Finally, we can also use closed circuit television, CCTV, which is where a camera can be placed in an area and continuously record. This is used to monitor animals that are vulnerable to disturbance by researchers, as will require minimal interference. They are often used to monitor birds' nests. As mentioned, we sometimes have to use marking in conjunction with other methods in order to identify individuals. This can be anything from a collar, a leg ring, or an ear tag. Tags and rings are often used in this way, as they'll have numbers printed on them to identify the individual as it enters or leaves an area. Collars can be slightly more high-tech, as they can provide continuous information to researchers as the animal goes about its day-to-day -day life. For example, it could track the location of an organism such as a bird, which would then give us lots of other information about the individual and its population, such as the location of feeding grounds, extent of migration routes, and the main habitat. The collars can be made using two different types of technology. Firstly, radio tracking. This is where the device emits radio waves that are tracked by a satellite. You could also use GPS. This is where the position is monitored based on location, velocity of movement and elevation to give precise location. DNA databases have been set up for different species as this can help us identify individuals and look at the size of a population gene pool to determine vulnerability to extinction. A large source of DNA comes from eDNA, environmental DNA. 
which is just DNA samples collected from the environment, for example, a water or soil sample. To give you an example, if eDNA is found in a water body from a great crested newt, then building will not be permitted, even if one has never been seen. Collecting DNA can also determine genetic relationships between individuals to check their suitability for mating. If they are closely related, then we would not want them to mate as inbreeding could occur. We can also use auditory devices to listen and record sounds of more vocal species. These are extremely useful when dealing with species that are not often seen, such as bats. Monitoring the audio can detect their presence in an environment by picking ultrasound waves they emit. Using this device may not be able to give us such detailed information about the size or the distribution of a population, just the presence of a species in an area. As technology has improved over the years, we are now using satellites to collect data. Satellites have many advantages, such as being able to collect large amounts of data quickly and continuously. They also allow us to collect data from hard to reach areas without damaging the habitat. Of course, they do also have some disadvantages, such as being expensive initially and are not able to collect physical samples for analysis. Satellites are carriers for data collection devices, such as light detectors or IR monitors. This data can be analysed to help create maps of a landscape and look at the distribution of vegetation. Finally, we are going to talk about something you may have available to you in your science department. A data logger, sometimes referred to as an environmental meter. These are handheld devices that can measure a range of abiotic factors, such as light intensity, temperature, wind speed and humidity. Data loggers can also be mounted on carrier devices, so humans do not need to be present to collect the data, and therefore, data for a larger area can be processed. There are lots of different examples of carriers that you need to know. Remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, including things like drones, which need to be controlled by someone at all times. Autonomous unmanned vehicle, AUV, which does not need to be controlled at all times. Aircraft. Pilots and crew require to get it in the air and fly it so cannot be out for a long period of time due to fuel constraints. Balloons can collect data from a range of heights in the atmosphere. Understanding the abiotic features of an environment will then help us to understand the requirements needed by the species that live there. This will help us if we ever need to put them in a captive breeding programme to ensure it is as successful as possible. There are also some non-technological methods of identifying the presence of a species in an area, such as nests and burrows. Different species have unique nest and burrow styles. Droppings. These can give detail on gender, diet of the organism and territory size. Tracks, such as footprints, can again show the amount of movement and extent of the territory. In a scientific setting, a researcher would use a holistic approach to collect data on a species or habitat to ensure the data is as reliable and accurate as possible. We need to know everything we can about a species and their needs to ensure that going forward, we know the best way to protect them. This could be establishing a protected area or keeping them in captivity or adding a new food supply. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>